morning and thank you for allowing me to join you this morning and to share with you some timeless and authoritative words of truth uh, from God's Word that we can share with you this morning. You know, we recognize that every new day is a fresh start in the grace of God, but every day also reminds us there's a great day coming, the ultimate new day of the kingdom of God at the return of Jesus, and we long for that day. Many people wonder just what it is that God expects of them. There are over 600 laws that he has given, and there are many people who have tried to live a God-pleasing life by trying to obey and to practice those laws. But you know, the problem is if we fail at one of them, we're guilty of all of them, as James 2 verse 10 states, for whoever keeps the whole law and yet stumbles in one point, he has become guilty of all. But you know, the basic question is, did God give us these laws that we should try by our own efforts to keep them? The Apostle Paul, writing under inspiration, provides us with a very important perspective. We read in Galatians 3.23, where it says, Therefore the law has become our tutor to lead us to Christ so that we may be justified by faith. We cannot keep and practice God's laws well enough to be justified by them, but by faith in Christ's sacrifice in life, God's demands are thus satisfied. But you know, it doesn't stop there. We build upon what Jesus has done for us. A life without accompanying good works is an indictment against having a saving faith in the first place. James 2.17 says, even so faith, if it has no works, is dead being by itself. True faith is exhibited by the fruit of good works that spring from that faith. John the Baptist, who was the forerunner of Jesus, admonished those who were coming out to be baptized by him to bear fruit in keeping with repentance, as we read in Luke 3, verse 8. Now those that were responsive to what it was that he had said wanted to know more. And the crowds were questioning him, saying, Then what shall we do? And he would answer and say to them, the man who has two tunics is to share with him who has none. And he who has food is to do likewise. And some tax collectors also came to be baptized and they said to him, teacher, what shall we do? And he said to them, collect no more than what you have been ordered to. Some soldiers were questioning him saying, and what about us? What shall we do? And he said to them, do not take money from anyone by force or accuse anyone falsely and be content with your wages. These we read in Luke 3 verses 10 to 14. Now what we just read that John prescribed was very practical. In essence, be generous, be fair, do not extort. What was expected, according to John, sounds very much like a summary that we find in Micah 6, 8, a very familiar verse to many. He has told you, O man, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you, but to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. What our God requires of us is not as difficult to understand as some may think. Walk with him in humility and integrity. Be kind and fair in your dealings with others. And this is also very much in harmony what, with what Jesus taught in summarizing God's greatest requirements. We read in Matthew 22 verses 35 to 40 that says that one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question, testing him, teacher, what is the great commandment in the law? And he said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the great and foremost commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend the whole law and the prophets. Love God. Love others. And love them through action. So what God requires of us is rather easily understood. The challenge, however, is in the living out of what is expected. 
And yet even in that, we are not expected to do these things by our own efforts. Thankfully, God has also provided the inner power and the strength to do that which we cannot do of our own. Galatians 5.16 states, But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not carry out the desire of the flesh. So as we keep in step with Holy Spirit, we follow the pathway of obedience to what God desires, and this way leads us away from that which we would naturally do according to our own sinful nature. Now that sounds like a great prescription for a God-pleasing life. And may that be the path that we walk today and every day. Let's close our time in prayer this morning. Father God, we thank you that you have made it very clear to us what it is that you expect and require of us. We are thankful, Father, that of all those laws that you have prescribed, so many of them, that if we, were try, if we would try to follow and obey them, we know it's impossible. Father, those things you have given us, as we just read, as, as a tutor, as a teacher, that which ought to lead us to faith in Christ. And we know that's the great desire for us. You've sent your son to satisfy your demands so that by having saving faith in him, we indeed are saved, justified, your requirements are met, and we're set free then to follow through with those works that are pleasing to you that you bring about through the power of your spirit. Thank you so much for a wonderful plan. We see that it is not so difficult to understand. And we see that you've given us the power and the ability to walk in the way that we ought to walk. So we just thank you, Father, that you provided us everything for life and sustenance in this age and in the age to come. So, Father, we come to you today very, very thankful that you've made these things clear to us. So, Father, now that we are set free to simply follow in obedience, we pray that you guide us this day that we do so. Father, through your enabling spirit based upon the faith of Christ, May that spirit lead us. May we stay in step with it. And so that we would walk in a way pleasing to you, helpful to others, and leading us away from that which is displeasing to you. Thank you so much, Father, for the resources and the plan you have for us. What a joy it is that we've shared these moments today and that we've been able to take a good look at your word and your plan for us. Father, we pray you guide our day. May we be obedient throughout this day and may you meet every one of our needs and may we reach out to one another and bear each other's burdens as you've called us to do. Father, we just thank you for these moments. We thank you for this day, for the blessings and opportunities of it. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, I thank you for this opportunity to share a few moments with you as we've looked at God's word and let it speak to us. Of course, I always would like to be available to pray for needs and concerns that you have. And so if you have something today that's on your heart and mind that you'd sure like somebody to pray for, that, just let me know. There's ways you can be in touch, as you see on your screen. And I would consider it a privilege to, to lift up your needs in prayer. Thank you for joining us this morning, and I look forward to a future time when we can share together again. Until that time, may God watch over you and guard and guide you. So long, and God bless. Thank you.